Hi, I'm Anita Kozan, and I'm from Minneapolis. I'm Marge Charmley, and I'm from St. Paul. Welcome to Buy Cities, a program by, for, and about the Buy Plus community and our friends and allies. And we are proud to say, as we always do, that we are the longest running show in the history of the world on bisexuality. Buy Cities uh, was uh, conceived of by Bill Burleson, and uh, we started in 2002. And we joined uh, forces with St. Paul Neighborhood Network in the fall of 2007. Bill was the brainchild of the show, and when he left the show in 2007, we moved from Minneapolis to St. Paul. Well, I think SPNN has taught our whole crew. We've all taken classes here, and at one point in time, they even reviewed some of our, um, our films and our interviews and they helped us increase our production qualities and gave us some ideas. So they have just been an absolute dream to work with. I look at this as being in a show where we are educating our viewers, be they from the gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender community, our allies, and people who are channel surfing and happen to come across it or who Google something on the internet and our show comes up. Our intent is to interview people who are of interest to the Bi Plus community and their friends and allies. So that might include uh, people that are doing a theatrical event, musicians, people of different religious backgrounds, people that um, are medical professionals and might have some information. Our main goal in the uh, Bi Cities is to increase bi visibility, dispel myths about bisexuality, and educate and uh, you know, help people understand who we are and what we are and we do that by interviewing many people uh, across the spectrum. We have committed people uh, as, as the, uh, the co-hosts, but also our crew. Everyone's volunteer, and we all want to do this show. We want uh, to put ourselves out there to increase visibility for people who are bisexual or within the bi plus community. There have been times when we've undergone some major changes, you know, where we lost a director or personal changes or people leave the show. And I think that Anita and I have been really strongly dedicated and committed to making sure that the show runs no matter what, through all the challenges we've had. Because we've kind of kept it going, there are other people that really come on board with us that are truly dedicated to wanting to do the show. So we've been really blessed with that. Everyone thinks, well, if you're not straight, then you're gay or lesbian. But just being the face, faces literally of people who identify as being bisexual, I think that's an important aspect. But the myths, I mean, there are a whole bunch of them, but uh, I realized I was bisexual. You know, I'm not just on my way to being something else. Uh, that I am and always have been bisexual. I just didn't know the name for it. Like with other marginalized groups, there are stereotypes and myths, uh, among others, uh, you know, that we're fence sitters, that we really just don't want to be gay, uh, also that we're promiscuous, that we go after anything that moves. A lot of people don't think we exist, that, we're, that, that people have a binary as operation or aspect of sexual orientation. So. How have we attempted to uh, show the diversity of the bi community and the bi plus community? We've had people with disabilities on. We've talked about disability and sexuality. We've had people that were deaf and hard of hearing. So there are times when we've actually had uh, signers on the show, mm -hmm. interpreters. We have tried to uh, be racially diverse and have people of uh, color. We've had people of different religious backgrounds, including atheists. We've had, you know, of course, straight people on. I feel like we have tried to present both in terms of our own visibility, but also to give voice to people who are transgender, or now we, you know, we also have the term gender non-binary, but for people to be able to see we're humans. I would say we've impacted people internationally. In 2012, when there was a marriage amendment to uh, ban uh, same-sex marriage in the Constitution, we did shows to educate people about the damage of anti-gay initiatives. And some of that was broadcast up in northern Minnesota. We had people from Mount Nyan, Minnesota on the city council. 
show that to their council representatives. There was a person in the, in the lobby and came up to Tom and said, I saw you on TV, you're from that show. And Tom said, oh yeah, by cities. And, and this person said, I was contemplating suicide. I had a gun in my hand. And the other hand, I was channel surfing, trying to decide if I wanted to take my life or not. And I came upon by City's show, you were interviewing somebody who was transgender, and the person said, I realized that's me. And I didn't know that there was anybody else like me. And as a result, I put the gun down. We were at the um, Because conference, and Tom was walking around talking to people, and uh, he went up to this woman and introduced himself and asked where she was from. And she said that she was from India and that she was on the internet. Only her husband knew that she was bisexual. She could not tell her family. It would be very bad. People can get killed yes. in India for being queer. She happened to see an episode of Vice Cities where we were interviewing the, the chair of the upcoming Because conference. And so she decided she was coming to Minnesota to come to that conference to meet other people who were bisexual. And she'd never met anyone else who was mm -hmm. bi, nope. and she came all the way from India because she had seen our show. When people came out and had same gender feelings, they felt forced to go into declaring themselves as gay or lesbian, and it wasn't safe to be bi. And whenever I've done bi presentations or come out as bi, there'll be someone in the group or in the audience that will come up to me afterwards and say, but I'm really bi, I'm really bi, but I, I, I haven't wanted to identify as that loudly because it wasn't safe. Since we've started doing this show, as we now know, based on demographic data, that the buys are the largest segment of the GLBTQ community, 52%. And that's very powerful because from going from non-existent, invisible, to being the largest segment was uh, very powerful information. I'm very appreciative of SPNN Studios mm -hmm. for all the work and the help they've given us over the years. Uh, we couldn't have done it without you. I'm also very um, grateful for the, the crew that we've had, the dedicated people. The crew that we have right now span all those decades and several generations. So we're, uh, I echo you, Marge. I am very grateful to be here. Join us in our signature goodbye, which is bye, bye for, for now. now.